John McCain was about more than politics. He brought us above politics. John is probably the only politician who could get us to set aside politics and come together as a state and a nation as we have. An emotional day for John McCain's family as they paid their respects to the late senator today on what would have been his 82nd birthday. Senator McCain's three sons and daughter Sydney stepping out at the state capitol just moments ago to thank the long line of people who came to say their final goodbyes to their father. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Pat Paris and I'm Stella Inger McCain, a family man through and through. He was a father of seven and has called his family duties one of the happiest parts of his life. Here's Megan Thompson from our sister station in Phoenix, taking a look back at McCain, not as a patriot, a war hero or a politician, but as a family man. To his colleagues, he was a patriot to world leaders an inspiration to millions and a man of great courage. As always, I'm indebted to my wife, Cindy, and my seven children. But to his family, John McCain was first a husband and a father, married to first wife Carol in 1965. The couple shared three children, sons Douglas and Andrew. Their youngest daughter, Sydney, just a baby when McCain was shot down over Vietnam and held as a POW for nearly six years, something he spoke about with Charlie Gibson back in 2008. Did it cost you your marriage? I think so. I think, but that's, again, my responsibility. I think we were separated for a long, long time. Uh, Carol is a wonderful and loving person and a wonderful parent. It just, we just grew apart, but the responsibility is mine. I didn't work hard enough. Then you met Cindy? Yep. Who pursued whom? Uh, I think I pursued her. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Wed in 1980, the couple had four children, Megan, Jack, and Jimmy, both of whom, like their dad, served in the military. Jack, the U.S. Naval Academy, Jimmy, the U.S. Marines. The McCains adopted their youngest daughter, Bridget, in 1991 from Bangladesh. I'm happy to know, to note that we are adoptive parents and it's enriched our lives. And we hope that that will also uh, encourage others to do the same. I don't know if I've been a good father or not, but I do think we've tried very hard, mainly because of Cindy, to spend a lot of time with our children. And so far, they, they've turned out pretty well, and I'm proud of them. By his side during times of great triumph. Privilege of accepting our party's nomination for President of the United States. An agonizing defeat. I had the honor of calling Senator Barack Obama to congratulate him. Please, to congratulate him on being elected the next president of the country that we both love. Perhaps his greatest legacy, the family that will carry on the lessons he taught them. His daughter Megan sang on The View this past fall when her father appeared on the show to celebrate her birthday. And I'm, I'm the luckiest person in the entire world. I mean, I've helped led, we are such a family that's filled with blessings and we have such a bond and such a love and I'm so grateful for that. A lot of people don't have that with their parents. You know, the pleasures of family life can seem like a brief holiday from the crowded calendar of our nation's business, but I have treasured them all the more and can't imagine a life without the happiness that you've given me. A former senator, a current senator, and the state's governor spoke at today's memorial at the Capitol. In the coming days, pol political allies, former opponents, and lifelong friends will get to remember the late senator. Today, Governor Doug Ducey gave his remarks. He says Senator John McCain was synonymous with the state he loved so much. To the rest of the world, John McCain was Arizona. When all of us here traveled and told people we were from Arizona, People knew two big things about it, John McCain and the Grand Canyon. Imagining Arizona without John McCain is like picturing an Arizona without the Grand Canyon. It's just not natural. Tomorrow at North Phoenix Baptist Church, former Vice President Joe Biden and Arizona Cardinals player Larry Fitzgerald will speak. More than dignitaries came to the Arizona Capitol to honor Senator McCain. We're getting the number that 7,500 people went to the Capitol today.
Yeah, to pay their respects, their final respects. And as KGA 9 on your side's Craig Smith reports, a long line of people who may have never known him felt the need to view his casket and honor his memory. Right here, you see one of the most striking parts of the memorials for Senator John McCain. The lengths people will go to feel connected to him, his life, and his death. Some people got in line as early as 7 a.m., even though plans called for viewing to open to the public at 2. Soon, the line stretched for blocks. Volunteers were careful to try to protect people from heat of over 100 degrees. People were allowed in not quite an hour early and found a moving experience well worth the wait. It was sad, surreal, you know, and just to be there to honor, you know, Senator John McCain for all that he's done for this nation. Um, it did, you know, I did shed tears for him because, you know, he's, it's a great void in our country and whoever's going to fill his shoes, they have a big shoe to, to fill. Susan Dicachea Vare says she cut short a vacation in California. Rosa Lara came up from Tucson. They are thinking of the senator and his family, too. It's very important that they know that there's so many people that I feel for them right now, too. Yeah. I mean, did you sort of gather some strength seeing as many people as came out? Yeah, it was neat. We've met so many people in the line. We've met uh, the former met. chairman of a Supai tribe, the current chairman. We've met people from Chicago, from uh, L.A. area. So a lot of Vietnam vets. A lot of Viet yes, a lot of Vietnam vets. And while plans called for ending the viewing at eight, the McCain family convinced the governor to keep the site open until everyone who wants to pay their respects can. Craig Smith, KGON 9, on your side. And John McCain is just the third person to lie in the state capitol in the past 40 years. State Senator Marilyn Jarrett was the last back in 2006. She was a businesswoman and a snowflake native who served on the state Senate for more than 10 years. She died after collapsing in her legislative office. Olympic gold medalist Jesse Owens was honored at the Capitol 1980. He was among the black athletes who won medals in the Berlin Olympics in 1936. He died here in Tucson, was buried in Chicago. Memorial events continue tomorrow with a funeral for the senator at North Phoenix Baptist Church. Friday, he will lie in state at the U.S. Capitol. Saturday, a memorial at Washington National Cathedral. Sunday, John McCain will be buried at the Naval Academy. And KGON 9, along with our sister station, ABC 15 presents special coverage of the Mavericks funeral. We'll be live tomorrow morning from 9 until 1 in the afternoon. Join us as we honor Senator John McCain.